inside Marseille after the fall of Western Europe's oldest city. Street intersections are fortified with gun emplacements and concrete trenches. They were manned by Nazis in the attempt to halt the entry of 7th Army troops. Allied bombings and Nazi demolitions destroyed docks, warehouses, dry docks, and other port facilities. Entrances to the area were partially obstructed by scuttled ships. However, the fast-retreating Nazis lacked the time to blow up electrical plants or to cut the city's water supply. A hasty bypass replaces a demolished bridge in the drive up the Rhone Valley. Tapes guide vehicular traffic. Wrecked railroad yards at Valence, 1st September. Before surrendering the city, the Nazis put a freight car full of explosives in the center of the yard and detonated the charge. Nearby homes were severely damaged with heavy casualties. At Lyon, which fell 3rd September, Allied engineers are machine gunned while building a bridge across the Rhone. Civilians take cover as the engineers return fire of the enemy, who is entrenched in the cupola of a civil hospital. Lyon's last ditch defenders were quickly wiped out. Crowds cheer the first troops to enter the large industrial and textile center. At Make Some Year, 17 miles northeast of Lyon, the Nazis attempted to break through Allied roadblocks. They lost six tanks and two self-propelled 88s mounted on half-tracks. All were knocked out by light-armored cars, which the infantry borrowed from a tank destroyer outfit. General Patch's army draws closer to a junction with 3rd Army troops. Warp, near an important highway leading to Belfort, is occupied 4th September. The Germans retreated from the town under cover of darkness on the night before the entry of Allied forces. Quiet since reaching the Arno in July, the 5th Army front becomes active again as Allied units cross the river to advance toward the Gothic line. Here on 2nd September, after holding the southern part of Pisa for over a month, forward elements of an anti-aircraft artillery battalion cross the Arno into the northern section of the city. Heading northwest, armored vehicles roll past the historic Leaning Tower of Pisa. Lieutenant General Mark W. Clark, in command of the 5th Army, is joined by a member of his staff in an inspection of the 14th century structure which the Nazis are reported to have used as an observation post. Southeast of Pisa, on the 3rd, a British anti-aircraft unit fords the Arno. the Burma Road, work progresses on the Huitung Bridge. It spans the Salween River east of Tungyue, the walled citadel that fell to Chinese troops after a six-week siege. The 90-meter suspension bridge is constructed by Chinese labor under the supervision of the Burma Road engineers. One and three-eighth inch cables support the bridge.
placing the 1,000 pound floor beams. The coolies do most of the job by hand. bolting a floor beam to the suspender cable. The bridge flooring is laid. By working both night and day, this vital link in the China-Burma route is rushed to completion. Widening the road on the eastward approach to the Huitong Bridge, a blasting crew places the dynamite. The area is under spasmodic Japanese attack. After the bombing, a dud is discovered near the bridge. The 250 pound high explosive bomb is minus the tail fin, which was knocked off on hitting the ground. Six sticks of dynamite and two charges are used to destroy the bomb. traffic over the new Salween River Bridge. At Aitape in northeast New Guinea, infantry troops plod through wet and almost inaccessible jungles in the campaign to hold the Drinimore River lines against fanatical Japanese resistance. Aitape was invaded 22nd April trapping 45,000 troops of the enemy's 18th Imperial Army. Native carriers bring much needed supplies from the coastal sector to the fighting lines. The cargo includes vital replacements for the medics, ammunition and other necessities. Supplies are unloaded at an infantry command post. In addition to the native carriers, C-47 cargo planes locate clearings along the jungle choked front and drop ration boxes. Itape is 150 miles southeast of Hollandia. Both were taken last April. Delays caused by Nazi bridge demolitions in France and Belgium are minimized by the immediate construction of spans by American engineers. This Ponton Bridge is typical of many spans constructed over the Meurs and other water obstacles facing the American advance. Another crossing of the Meurs is affected by using an old, partially demolished span as a base for a 250-foot Bailey Bridge. On 1st September, armored vehicles of General Courtney Hodge's 1st Army opened fire on the French town of Dercy in their drive toward the Belgian frontier. abandoned Nazi pillbox near Cambrai on the road to the Belgian border. St. Quentin falls to the First Army, 3rd September.
south of Marken, Belgium, 2nd September. Retreating Nazis set fire to sections of the town. At 19.15 hours, 2nd September, the first element of General Hodge's army crosses the Franco-Belgian border. Exploiting the breakthrough into Belgium, units of the first army attack the retreating column of a thousand Nazi near Jemap. American tanks, mortars, half-tracks, and armored cars concentrate their fire on a wooded area 150 yards from their own advancing units. captured German captain accompanied by a party of Americans near the French border in Belgium urges his men to surrender, explaining the hopelessness of their position. Members of the rounding up party were volunteers of the First Army. More than 300 prisoners are taken. Armored units of the First Army attack a farmhouse near the Franco-Belgian border where the Nazis tried desperately to stem the American push toward the German frontier. Resistance at the farmhouse ceases, but Germans escape through a tunnel leading from the building to an enemy OP in the nearby forest. The American First Army continues to eliminate large pockets of resistance as it engages the enemy on a 70-mile front. On 4th September, a U.S. patrol sets out to investigate a case of Nazi mass murder and destruction perpetrated in the French town of Martincourt, a reprisal against the citizen population for an FFI military incident. On 2nd September, FFI men ambushed a German staff car near the town, whereupon members of a German Panzer Grenadier division surrounded the village, setting houses afire and shooting at everything in sight. Some of the population managed to escape, but only after being ruthlessly beaten. While the 1st Army pushes north toward Liège and Aachen, other American units, 6th September, launch an attack south of the Belgian border in the Sedan area. P-47s aid in harassing fleeing Nazis. in the town of Iyi.
On the right wing of the American advance, elements of General Patton's Third Army are helped to cross the Meuse River by a barge supplied by a French patriot. Nazis caused a temporary slowdown of the American pursuit by demolishing the bridge at this point. Infantrymen advanced to Samuel, where in World War I on September 12, 1918, the American Army launched its first offensive as an independent command. Third Army artillery opens fire on Nazis defending the Meurs River. Infantrymen attempting to cross the Moselle are driven back by heavy enemy fire. Nazi positions are neutralized. The river is finally crossed, opening the way for drives toward the Siegfried Line.